So I try to be quick, but fast. I have many things to say, and I won't be able to join the panel, as you know. So please, if you have any question, you can contact me. So uh, let's start with the future of, of marketing. Um, we are in the midst of a generational landmark. And I'd like to start with a trend that has been brewing for a long time, which is the shift from millennials to Gen Z and the emerging of Generation Alpha. These are the next generation consumers. The Gen Z or Generation Connected or dot com kids sometimes are the largest generation ever. They are actually two billions globally, and they will soon rule the world, if not already. However, they may be the first digitally native age group and get through social media and driving Tesla cars. They still prefer physical setting when it comes to shopping experiences. This is something very important. Following our Gen Z, are the alpha generation, aka the virtual generation, born into technology. They will favor virtual world to the real one and drive autonomous vehicle too. They'll be the most educated and wealthiest generation ever, but they will be less committed with great customer experience expectation. This to say, the customer journey will become incredibly complex and in this transformative context, brands need to understand these generations. So the closer brands get to the, to the consumer, the bigger the gain. They expect more and more seamless digital experiences across the various touch points of the customer journey and will demand more real-time ones. So new digital touch points, including connecting dressing rooms, virtual reality walls, self-driving cars will emerge. And consequently, brands will have to rethink their MarTech, sales tech, and business tax to stay relevant, of course. Indeed, we are on the cusp of another wave of sweeping tech change from drones, artificial super intelligence, ISI, um, that will replace, for example, human tasks, generative AI tool that will help marketers save costs and we take the power at the expense of developers. To voice marketing, blockchain marketing, AR, VR, and so on. All this technology will definitely redefine the consumer journey. And as consumers are slowly moving to the web suite, and entering a new immersive market, the metaverse, mastering its virtual brand positioning will be the key to generate awareness first, attract new customers and increase brand loyalty. So Web3 is an exciting, immersive innovation of new places, new products and new identities with unlimited marketing opportunities. One more very important thing, hyper-personalization and the value of getting in white will matter more than ever. Brand store and product loyalty are more elusive due to COVID-19, within the bar, you know, and disrupting business operations and the way businesses communicate with consumers. So adjusting how you are communicating and interactive with your customers at scale will be critical, believe me. <laughs> Using multiple responsive creative assets Automation and content intelligence will help create very personalized, tailored experiences that lead to business benefits. Real-time advertising changes the way brands communicate with their consumer and utilizing predictive contents in your marketing activities will lead to three times higher revenues and performance metrics, which is unbelievable. <laughs> 3D printing technologies will generate demands for new and unique products such as raw material, for example, unpersonalized patterns, unlocking wonderful consumer personalizations. Virtualization will deliver the flexibility and agility required for digital future. And many companies will ship from a product company model to a service company model. So definitely I would say that the subscription model will be king in the next coming years. But you have to keep something in mind. Purple-led marketing and human-centered marketing will be central to any marketing strategy that leads to brand love. So those who favor the application of my A4E model will definitely emerge victorious. So I let you with the slide, authenticity, emotion, engagement, exclusivity, and experience. This is what is really important. Another thing, compliance and privacy. Marketing departments will have to tackle data privacy issues in a data-driven marketing world and make sure that the marketing is privacy compliant, which will again completely change the advertising landscape. For example, third-party cookies will be no more in 2023, in one year, changing the digital and advertising landscape. 
In this post-cookie world, for example, they will be promising alternatives such as third-party cookies, authenticative user data, contextual advertising solution. Well, you will need to find new level of growth. And what's more for the future? Good question. As I only have five minutes, I need to be really quick, Omar. So will brand computer interfaces called BCI and direct brand advertising messages be the future of marketing? Who knows? Will machine or non-human customers be the next customer unlocking a world of new opportunities in the machine economy? And will machine change the way you operate businesses? We'll see. Definitely machine to machine interactions, machines that interact with human or infrastructure components provide the foundation for the machine driven M2X economy, where humans and smart autonomous devices interact, transact, collaborate, such as, for example, in a smart city and smart home context. That's it for the first presentation. Let's switch directly to the Web3 technology. So what it is, Web3, aka the spatial web, is the next phase of the web, triggered by the first industrial revolution, as mentioned by Steve in the introduction. It really removes boundaries between digital content and the real life. So this new Iteration of the internet will improve customer experience, deliver value and empowerment through disruptive technologies, such as, for example, you can see all of them in this slide, machine learning, natural language processing, cryptocurrencies, metaverses, 3D graphics, IoT device, AR, VR, well, everything that will definitely amplify the Web3 ecosystem to benefit everyone, I mean the world population. So, in a truly decentralized world. Web3 will be first user-centric. It will allow hyper-personalization. AI will completely redefine the consumer journey to make it a seamless experience. The use of P2P networks and blockchain solutions will remove intermediates and allow Web3 to become trustless and permissionless. Web3 will, of course, also uh, improve data transparency. But there is a big but. <laughs> Did you know that actually many current Web3 solutions rely on centralized infrastructure only? Actually, the majority, uh, for example, of crypto exchanges, NFT marketplaces, and metaverse solutions are centralized solutions. So, you know, despite all the talk about Web3 being a decentralized version of the web and Web3 promises to handle over power to Users, it's still an utopia, but not the reality. Large private companies and venture capitals already own the majority of the Web3 ecosystem, which is a problem. Now, as a brand, is transitioning into Web3 any different? Well, if I have to answer this question, I, I would say that it can be an opaque process and a risky decision if done without any purpose, any core skill and insights. Actually, many international brands, you know, are looking to enter the rapidly growing Web3 ecosystem, leverage their popularity online and connect with the Web3 communities, you know, activate new market for content, products and services. But few companies have a real understanding of this new digital ecosystem and need first to figure out the best path and the right strategy into Web3. This is critical. Just an example. One universal truth in the metaverse actually is that the majority of users are currently under 80 years old, more than 80% of them. These underage users can't even own a crypto wallet, believe it or not, they can own a wallet and acquire cryptocurrency. Thus, the majority of transactions in the metaverse are micro transactions, actually, micro transactions. So they are not customers. They are only prescribers, maybe your future consumers, but they are actually prescribers. So the buying power still belong to the previous generation. I mean, the millennials, for example, and they are mostly absent from the metaverses. Another truth, if women are breaking into NFTs, the Web3 ecosystem is still male dominated. So we have to be careful. Uh, some example right now, um, this element aside, I mean, Web3 offer an extraordinary uh, application, applicative, sorry, potential and new business model already emerged and another will emerge quickly. 
Uh, some example on the slide, fractional ownership, for example, um, of assets thanks to the tokenization, which lower the value to entry for investment. Real-time blockchain payments, CBDC, you know, state cryptocurrencies, uh, play to earn uh, NFT games. What can I have? Virtual metaverse shopping, um, DeFi protocol, virtual shopping in the metaverse. Well, a lot of emerging possibility and of course, smart contracts. So it also offer brands the opportunity to really reinvent themselves by using these technologies. It first allows brands to enhance the user experience by creating seamless, authentic, personalized, immersive experiences, just as, such as I mentioned, live virtual shopping. You probably don't know it, but McDonald's and Burger King, for example, both filled trademarks for virtual restaurants in the metaverse. It also changed the way brands communicate with the audience. In fact, people engage you know, in communities uh, are more willing to spend in the metaverse and the Web3 ecosystem. It offers also great advertising opportunities. And one more thing, corporate metaverses improve internal workflow and communication between employees. So if I have to sum up, I would say that Web3 still face many challenges. First, most important one, the mass adoption. You know it, you know, in fact, a technology only works if it's massively adopted. So metaverse early adoption right now is essentially in the gaming industry. I'm sure you heard about Roblox, for example. It's, a, it's, a, it's an online game. But the mass adoption, in my mind, will come only with social metaverses adoption, which will come, for example, with the metaverse from Facebook. Cross-solution interoperability is still a problem. We need to be able to operate smart contracts on cryptos and different platforms. It will be really essential. 